All right, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Conversations from the Deal Room. I'm so excited to have Kevin Jackson, Senior Vice President of Total Network Services with me today. Kevin, say hello to our audience. Hey. Hi, hi, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. I've also got Taylor Wallace, who you're all familiar with, Chief of Staff at ENS, Total Network Services. Taylor, say hello to our audience. What's going on, everybody? Pleasure to be here. For folks that don't have a clue about TNS, break it down for them in one or two minutes. The network provides all the tools that are needed to create and manage dedicated clouds. And, and these clouds really have the ability to host many virtual private servers and uh, online devices. And you'd say, well, there's lots of cloud companies around. Yes, but TNS was designed specifically to address the needs of the blockchain community. And the blockchain is, is great, really referred to as Internet 2.0. So uh, the, the focus is, is mm. really different. It, the, the mission really is to develop and employ solutions that address the business needs of blockchain community. And um, this kind of started in the fintech world, but it's rapidly expanded to wireless devices, streaming media, and the internet of things. I really want to come back to what you were referring to around Internet 2.0, because I think it's a great way to package all of it in a nutshell. But before I do that, Taylor, give us a few minutes of your take on the value that it's delivering today. I think uh, as a whole, TNS, we have an ideology and about... Um, how we would like the future of commerce and finance and business in general to go. And blockchain provides us with a pathway to move towards that kind of business ideology that we have. So um, essentially blockchain, the reason why it's an internet 2.0 is because for the first time ever, blockchain has provided the internet with something it's never had before. It provides the internet yeah. with verifiable security and um, verification. And that's why you're seeing the fintech space, specifically in cryptocurrency, blow up so much right now is because the internet finally has able to say, okay, you own this thing and, so I own it. and nobody else can um, create those things. They can't be generated out of thin air. Um, and so you, for the first time, have this new internet where it can do uh, a new type of commerce, like in the same way, if I give you hard cash in your hand and you give me whatever in return, you can now have that same sort of security with the internet and that's from blockchain. And so the reason why TNS exists is because we believe in blockchain's ability to do new things for the internet in multiple different verticals, including with digital assets, with fintech where we're in and also now with um, security specifically um, in supply chain regarding the ICT space and Kevin would be the best person to talk more on that but yeah it's a really exciting place to be we're just really the whole world is just now figuring out what blockchain really has to offer and why it's such a big deal the internet provided the kind of pathway you know all the roads were paved but we right. didn't really have to, to verifiably put on them and say, okay, now we can drive something secure and verifiable on those roads. And now that's happened and, and you will continue to see the space blow up. And we're lucky to be in the position we are. We can say we're early adopters in this space and building. It's fantastic. Technology. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for connecting the dots for us there, gentlemen, because I think that there's quite a bit of uncertainty when it comes to the, the, the end use case of the blockchain, which I think is essentially security and, and verifying ownership. And there are a lot of things that TNS is attacking on both the enterprise side and some other new, really exciting verticals, yep. which I want to allow Taylor to speak to in just a few minutes. But right. Kevin, please talk to us about what's happening on the enterprise side. There's been quite a few developments and obviously our audience has been learning a lot from what's been coming through your guys' press cycle. Bring us up to speed. Well, you know, they used to say, like, um, you don't know, no one knows you're a dog, a dog on the internet, yeah. right? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, you never know who you are communicating with across yeah. uh, the internet. You know, be, before you didn't have video, and sometimes a lot of people don't like to use video. So a dog may be there, and you don't even know. 
But in business, you don't really don't care if it's a dog, as long as you can trust the dog, right? As long as the dog can deliver value to you, right? As long as you can verify the information or verify the yeah. product, okay? You can be a cat for our kid. <laughs> and, <laughs> Absolutely. And that's, and Absolutely. that's what blockchain does. It gives you an immutable, uh, unchangeable information and data, right? It gives you um, a verification of the provenance of information mm -hmm. and data. And products in today's world, most much of it is digital. So it's about information. So you want to make sure that in business, you need to make sure that the data and the information is trustworthy, it hasn't been changed or modified. Um, so that's really where we are. And one of the things that uh, has really taken us across multiple industry verticals is that we're, we're looking at wireless devices uh, and the internet of things because today's business is mobile. And yes. And everything is done on mobile devices. Uh, the, the smartphone is, is how you connect to your business, to your family, uh, to your information. So uh, that's one of the areas where we are applying blockchain in order to secure these devices, prevent counterfeit devices, make sure your device can't be spoofed. Um, this is fantastic, Kevin. And, you know, immediately as um, any trained investor starts to hear the network in mobile, we start to think of the Verizons, T-Mobiles, Deutsche Telekoms uh, mm -hmm. of the world. And there are huge organizations spanning, you know, hundreds of different business units. Uh, they're not structured the way your ordinary startup or even, you know, typical public company is. And what I really kind of wanted to, to ask you today was what, what strategic partnerships have we solidified in the telecom ICT industry to allow us to move a little quicker than the typical startup would and help us punch a little bit above our weight, right? Because it seems like there's been a lot of activity with prospects there. So curious to get a little bit more on the partnership front, Kevin. Well, now you, you want me to talk about our secret sauce, right? Because <laughs> you, you mentioned the fact that there's so many different telecommunications companies out there. And it's not just the telcos that operate over the wireless networks. You have the automobile manufacturers that are leveraging mm. wireless networks. Absolutely. Gamers leverage wireless networks. So if we're going to do something, it has to be more it would have to be something more than just these providers, right? And that's why we went to the top. We're mm -hmm. working with the Telecommunications Industry um, Association, the TIA, who is the, um, uh, the, the mouthpiece, the interface for the entire industry to government of how to manage, how to make communications secure across every industry vertical. So one of our key partners is the TIA itself. And starting in early 2020, uh, we approached them with the concept that we refer to as the Enhanced Mobile Equipment Identifier or EMEID. Anything that connects to the mobile network has to be uniquely identified. And one second right there, just want to hit pause very quickly. Repeat that for us one more time, Kevin. It's E-M-E-I-D. What does that stand for again? So it's the Enhanced Mobile, enhanced. mobile Equipment Identifier. The ID on the end is identifier. So Enhanced E, Mobile M, Equipment E, Identifier, ID. And breaking it down just a little further, Every single device has one, correct? Yes, Every single one. including your smartphone, your Xbox, your television, your car. <laughs> Incredible.
anything that connects to the network am i am i right to assume that yes because you have to be uniquely identified right so it's it's sort of like i hate to use this analogy but it's almost like a dmv license plate for any electronic device that connects to the network it's exactly like that right it's a globally unique 56 bit identification number for a physical piece of mobile station equipment. You may have also heard of the IEMEI, right? That is yes. a similar number that's managed by another organization, but both coordinate and collaborate to ensure that every device has a unique number. And this is globally administered by TIA. So if you're a Verizon or an AT&T or a Microsoft trying to use wireless gaming, you still need to go to the TIA to get an MEID. But who's rendered that authority to the TIA? Who's given it the ability to say, uh, these are the protocols? Has that been given by the, the technology community? Has it been given by the, by the regulators? It actually was done by the industry itself. Um, no industry wants the government to jump into their business. And the only way to keep the government out is to have a consistent voice for the industry. So Incredible. the TIA is a member membership organization. It has <laughs> over 400 members in the ICT industry. I guess right. we can say a, a decentralized yes. network, pun intended. <laughs> By intent, <laughs> exactly. All right. So they um, basically get uh, take the pulse of the industry. Sure. Um, they work with industry to understand where the technology is going, where government needs to step in, where government doesn't need to step in. And they actually um, provide recommendations to the government for things like uh, regulations or laws or, or rules, all right? So, so that it is a win-win for the industry and the government and us users who, uh, so they actually um, do a lot to make sure that the individual user can still do things like have access to the internet when you're in a rural area. And they play a, a very key part in kind of connecting every single corner of this industry. And over time, it's spanned into so many different uh, new, uh, I guess you could say, applications, particularly around IoT yes. and the smart home, the smart car. Um, but with, with, with a company like TNS, where, where are we trying to uh, position ourselves in the blockchain and the and the end use case for the end user and and where is TIA coming into that well we've talked earlier about the importance of um have being able to trust information um, yes. and trust the device that the information is you're consuming information and in through and also trust in the user that maybe giving you the information or presenting it to you, giving you the content. So what we have actually done is our premier product is digital names. And what that does is it actually um, helps identify a unique user by mm -hmm. providing a human readable and memorable um, uh, name instead of wow. the, the, uh, public keys that are real long multi-bit numbers that nobody can remember and is easily uh, make errors with. So the digital name will help you identify a user, right? And verify a user. Um, the actual uh, device can be identified and verified uniquely using the E-M-E-I-D, okay? Understood. The, the information is digital information and all digital information, a piece of software, uh, an application, 
even an NFT has mm. a digital signature that's unique, mm. all right? And then finally, we partner with other companies like uh, one of our other major partners is Ripples, which is a geospatial engineering company that can uniquely identify the location of either a physical entity or a virtual entity. So they could tell you where a piece of software is in the world. They could tell you where an NFT is in the world as a virtual asset. So by combining knowledge of the individual, knowledge yes. of the device, identification of the actual virtual item and its location, you get a four a uh, four factor identification capability that can be applied in any business model. Incredible, Kevin. It's sort of like mobile security 2.0. At the yes. beginning, we had very basic <laughs> rudimentary things. I remember AOL and connecting in, you know, the Norton Mac and McAfee's of the world started to pop in and, and made mm -hmm. it easier for, um, you know, ca category kings like Apple to be able to produce at massive scale, you know, computers for us to be able to surf the web right. with peace of mind. That hasn't gotten to the smartphone yet, it seems. Well, I get scam. I get scam calls every 15, 20 minutes these days. <laughs> that's that's pretty interesting. You said one of our newest partners is Forward Edge AI. They have a product called uh, Gabriel, which is specifically designed mm. to stop scam calling and robocalls because they can do a digital signature of the actual call, either a voice call or a text. So now with Gabriel, we have yet another factor where we can protect the user with who's using that particular device. Did you, know, did you know that 40% of revenue based upon streaming media is lost to companies because of fraudulent use of content? Because... Hmm. People give others their username and password. And I can see Taylor shaking in his seat, waiting to jump in here because he's, he's been up to some very exciting things the last few weeks. But Kevin, I, I would be remiss if I switched topics and handed the mic to Taylor without asking you this. This has to translate into huge cost savings for the enterprise on the supply chain side. The, verify, the, the ability to verify the phones that are being manufactured how, how, what what kind of losses and pains are the enterprises experiencing today uh, with with probably something as simple as phone manufacturing and not being able to verify if this is a true Apple device or if this is a true wow. XYZ device? Talk to us for just one more minute on that before we we, we segue into, uh, into this new uh, conversation. That's simple. Out of the multi-billion dollars that are paid on, on uh, devices, uh, over 25% of that is, is paid on counterfeit or fraudulent content or devices. 25%. Yes. <laughs> it's incredible that we're 20 years, at, well, 30 years into the web, commercially speaking, and 10 years into the blockchain, and this has still not been solved. So, folks, TNS is positioning itself for some really great things on the enterprise side. I want to quickly shift gears to Taylor Wallace who is actually calling in from North Carolina, where some very exciting strategic partnerships have started emerging, conversations from what I understand at this stage, but still very much worth us sharing publicly and getting you guys privy to. So Taylor, talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing on the creative side. Kevin's talked a little bit on the enterprise side. It seems like we can finally claim ownership to a JPEG. If a JPEG is shared, broadly on the web, we can finally trace it back to one owner. A am, I, am I right to assume that? Yeah, yeah. Again, the blockchain is cool in that we're, we're able to help the enterprise and the everyday person. And it, it, what's interesting is, that, is the enhanced MEID that Kevin is talking about is at the end of the day, it's a non-fungible token. And if you see my shirt here, uh, we have a, a brand here we've created called N NFTYS, Nifties, which stands for the same thing. So, it's incredible. Um, <laughs> when you and think you talk to actually talk to us about Nifties, Taylor, because 
from what I understand, this is rolling out into uh, a, a brand that is part of the TNS family, such yeah. uh, like Digital Names and a few others which are in the works, um, which which I don't want to spill the beans on. But talk to us a little bit about Nifties. I, I I know we've um, we've together personally discussed quite a bit, but bring us up to speed. What is Nifties? So, uh, so far this year and in, in 2021, about $5 billion have been spent on NFTs so far. Um, and, and the year is, is not close to being over. I mean, th- that in, in and of itself should, should tell you something. 50 billion. No, f- 5 billion. 5 billion. 5 billion. Okay, getting five. ahead of myself there. Yeah. We'll, 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 <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll be there. A few zeros. <laughs> we'll be there soon enough. But I mean, five, I mean, think about it. $5 billion have been spent on buying NFTs wow. so far. Here, uh, and Visa just bought their ver- their very first uh, NFT. I mean that that should tell you something as well. They bought a CryptoPunk, um, but yeah, it, the the NFT space has just gone parabolic because, like you were saying, John, the internet has found a way to verify ownership of many different things, such as uh, an image file or a music file, for example. So. Now, if, you know, previously on the previous version of the internet, if I were to send you an MP3 file or you were to send me one that wouldn't have any value in your hard drive versus it would mine because everybody has the same copy of that, of yeah. that uh, MP3 file. But now what's amazing is that if verified on the blockchain, you can see where that MP3 file came from, where it originated and where it's been subsequently passed to or sold um, down the line, and there's some amazing ways that you can utilize smart contracts. Specifically, um, Ethereum is the biggest one um, in the NFT space right now, where uh, content creators can get paid royalties um, every time that, uh, let's say, uh, an image file changes hands down the line, they can get a royalty on that. That's actually one of the original reasons why NFTs were created. So it's a huge space. It's we've The internet's never been able to move in this sort of way before, yeah. just like saw crypto go parabolic we're seeing nfts do the same now um because we found out it's not just currency it's any assets and um and creative ones is where it started but it's moving into many different spaces that we as we've talked about on the deal box daily a number of times uh nfts have gone into tons of different spaces but uh absolutely yeah so we're what so we're, we're, doing, we're building out a we're building out a marketplace right now you can follow us right now on instagram just at, uh, at nifties.io but and folks, uh, there will be links to that right in the comments yeah. of this uh, interview. But thank you, Taylor. Again, it's at NFT. Come again. Dot io. Yep. There you have it. Folks, where can our audience get information on everything we just discussed and uh, talk to us about the website that's coming, I think, on the horizon. So uh, let's have Taylor start that one off and then we'll end on, uh, with Kevin. Yeah, tnscorp.io. Um, is a great place for you to find information about what we're up to right now. Some updates on our new Series B round that we're entering into. Um, definitely check that out. And um, we have our other you know, companies that are underneath, you could say, the TNS umbrella, <clears throat> such as digitalnames.io, which is the uh, easy naming format that Kevin was talking about earlier. And then nifties.io are the places that you can find us um, at. And yeah, check out our social medias too. Fantastic. And word on the street is there's a new website coming on the horizon. Am I right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, we, we, uh, we're developing a new site that's going to make it easier okay. for people to see what TNS is up to in its entirety. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. we're excited about that, about that being stood up here soon. Closing thoughts for our audience, Kevin and uh, Taylor. Fantastic 30,000 foot view into this incredible new landscape that's emerged. I want to hand the mic quickly to Kevin to close us off here. Any mm-hmm. final or closing thoughts? And thank you, by the way, for your time. I know it's pretty, pretty late over on the East Coast. No, um, I, I guess what you really need to understand is, is that, you know, as some say, data is a new all, but data is mm-hmm. worthless unless you can verify it. And that's, yeah. what, that's what TNS is doing. It's enabling the verification of data across mm-hmm. every industry, through every device. So, um, you know, it may be the biggest company you've never heard of. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic, gentlemen. Well, I'm really, truly looking forward to the new site. Obviously, links to everything that was referenced will be down below in the comments. 
or in the description. I'm your host, Jonathan Alvarado. Thank you, Kevin and Taylor, for joining me for Thank this you. episode of Conversations from the Deal Room. We'll catch Bye. you guys next time. All right. See you guys. Thank you, guys.